Well, how's it going? I'm Mark Duffy. Welcome to my channel. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you about my favorite vlog setup. Let me introduce you to Roach Castle. Carningford, Kilwera Church Ruin. They look at the size of this building. Shh. Shooting at sunrise. So what is this setup? This is the Sony ZV-E10 paired up with the new Samyang 12mm f2 autofocus with the Sennheiser MKE 200 shotgun mic and then I just have a cheap KNF um, variable ND stuck on the front with the small rig I don't know what you'd call this Bluetooth controller selfie stick thingy me Rob. Straight off the bat I'm gonna tell you I'm absolutely loving this. I've shot loads with this. I've had so much fun with it. Like, look at the size of it. The footprint on this is tiny. Considering the amount of features, spec that you get with this, this is a really, really small footprint. Let's kick it off. What are the pros? The, the obvious one, I've already mentioned it. It's the footprint, the size. When you have the kit lens on this, it'll fit in your pocket bar and a microphone. A really, really, really small footprint. But, you know, if you want to have the nice shallow depth of field, getting something like the Sam Yang is, is the reason why I got it. When it comes to video, this APS-C camera, I'm emphasizing APS-C camera, because everyone always makes a big deal of the full frame versus APS-C. This APS-C is competing against my two A7 trees. I'm recording on an A7 tree right now with a 20 mil f1.8 at f1.8, and this will stack up to it it will absolutely stack up to it. You've got all the color profiles that you can use. I personally like to use HLG3 and I'm able to absolutely uh, match them really easily in this because I don't like to color grade all that much. So uh, I, I try to keep it to a bare minimum. Um, and what I, find, what I find with these 8-bit cameras is if you use HLG3, they highlight uh, fall off, especially in someone like me, you know, when you're a human disco ball like me with a beard, you have to really control your your highlight fall off and using those kind of um, color profiles is really nice to use. So I use HLG3 for that. You can use it on this camera, you can use it on the, on the A7 III. So then you've got the 4K capabilities, really great as always. It's kind of nearly standard at this stage. Autofocus, wow. The autofocus on this is savage, absolutely savage, full eye, uh, tracking now, you know, with the, the problem with the A7 III is, and I, ha I have it right now, is the fact that I am using a field monitor to monitor what I'm doing is right here, and I lose the ability to, of eye autofocus. So I just have a section here set to where my head's going to be, so it'll automatically focus on my head and hopefully not this text on my chest because the high contrast. Where with this, because it has the screen, I don't have to have an external screen on it, so I get eye autofocus on this all the time. It's really accurate, it's really quick. And then there is a custom button. Now you can change the button if you want. To have it set to the trash button, you press that and it goes into what's called product mode. And it basically just turns off face and eye detection. And that means when you want to put a product into the front, you don't actually have to cover your eyes. As you can see, that's quite slow to catch. It hasn't even caught yet because it's catching, it's catching my shirt right here. So if I try and cover that, now it's caught the camera. With the product, section the product feature on this disables that and it will catch a product really quickly uh, if you've been following me on instagram and you see all my recent reels they've all been shot on this if you've been following my vlogs they've all been shot on this and you can see the performance over the last number of months with the autofocus i've yet to find where it's failing usually in, in low light situations and I haven't had enough that it has really really failed dramatically on me okay so this next pro about the preamps it's a bit there it's a bit weird because it's a con and it's a pro the con is the fact that the preamp isn't as strong a signal uh, as say the a7 III. so when you plug in the a the mke you need more you need more gain which means that the preamp isn't as good but the noise floor is a lot lower so it means that there's less noise to give you a great example on this if i stuck this microphone the mke 200 onto my uh, a7 tree for me to meter my voice right which is if you want to think in photography terms if i want to expose my voice right i would have to put it at its lowest setting at level one where if i want to get the same settings on this camera here on the zve 10 i would actually have to put it up at level five to level seven but the only thing is, if you did that on any other camera, you would have a high level of noise and have a high noise floor. And you don't have it with this. So although the preamp is a lot lower in signal strength, the noise floor is a lot lower as well. So it is a pro and it is a con. You'd, I would rather have a stronger signal strength. So that means I wouldn't have to 
to boost the gain as much but then the fact that i don't have as much of a noise floor for that it's kind of a it's it's a weird one it's a weird one it's a pro and it's a con and um, the flip out screen i didn't know how much i missed the flip out screen until i started using this it's just you know just being able to being able to see yourself now the issue is though keep an eye contact you want to keep on that lens so my screen is here and you'll see my eyes dotting here it's even more obvious you know left to right left to right you're looking way off the screen it looks kind of weird so if i was looking at a screen off off lens it'd be like that there and you can tell straight away and you kind of get into the habit that you end up looking at yourself so you have to know that it's you know kind of take it for a second kind of okay it's exposed right it's caught focus which it, it hasn't yet failed me on that part and it's just like okay am i how how's my composition my composition looks right now do a take and then it's look directly at the camera and try not to look away so that's the only thing that i have an issue with and it's just it's just you're in your own head with that but yeah the screen oh missed it absolutely missed it now there are loads of features and this does 24 megapixel photography i'm going to be honest i use this for vlogs and vlogs only just only does video the one thing i love about this is that when you're recording file you know video files to the camera and you format your card when you, you know when you're finished with the card format it start off the next project it doesn't reset the file naming convention just continues it on so i've shot nearly 400 video files with this where with the a7 trees it goes back to zero and it can be an absolute nightmare when you're doing multiple shoots over a number of weeks and you want it for the same project it's just you have to make sure you have to folder them separately or rename them thereafter this way here don't have to worry about any of that it's a silly pro i know but it's it can be frustrating when it's asking you to replace files as you're importing into the computer just bring the files into the computer let me get going now if we talk about ergonomics of this camera you can definitely tell it's been designed for vloggers the, the most convenient button to press is the record button it's in a it's in a really nice comfortable position i found and um, you'll see on the top as well there's a big massive grid area there that's the actual built-in microphone it comes with this nice hot shoe dead cat for it but to be honest i would rather just use my own microphone for this i get good consistency from different from camera to camera so uh, i haven't really used this only if i'm going on a family trip and i use this as a family camera i'll bring the kit lens with me and i'll just bring the dead cat on it to make it as small a footprint as possible like look at the size of that kit lens it's absolutely tiny um it's the same lens they've been offering for years you get this with the a6000 they haven't they don't seem to have changed in any way at all there's nothing much to be said about it um it is what it is you know I've upgraded to the Samyang, I'm well happy with that. And the last pro I want to discuss about is its USB streaming capabilities, which is just absolutely seamless and works so great. You just access from the USB-C port and it's just plug and play into your computer. Couldn't be any more simpler. I have a mount uh, about there over my screen. I do have another webcam test now, but uh, there is why I've been using the camera so far for some Zoom meetings and a potential podcast I could be doing so uh, uh, later on in the year. And yeah, like I said, plug and play. And even on, on the temperamental zoom, I can get this working no problem with the MKE 200 and I get a really good quality out of it. So well impressed with that, really happy with that as an addition. Next, I'm gonna move on to the pros of the lens. So I'm gonna continue on around the whole setup of this combination, then go back on the cons I found overall. So it's not, this is not just a camera review, it's an overall setup review. So I'm using the brand new Samyang 12mm F2 autofocus. And I stress the autofocus because the manual focus version was the go-to APS-C astrophotography lens of choice. And it was an absolute just beast. The only thing about it was it had a weird star filter. It had like a 1970s um, starburst in it. That's not the case with this one. I've shot this at f16 and it has a it has a proper starburst, which is which is great to see because the other one was quite weird. Uh, but I only ever used it for Astro. Um, this. I haven't had any issues with i haven't i honestly have not had any issues with it. it's nice and light it's quite small it does f2 it's what can be said about it now because i have variable nds for my main lenses i decided to get one specific for this for this one reason i can attach a lens cap to it so it means i don't i don't ever have to take the variable nd off i'll never be in a case where i've forgotten it so i can always potentially shoot at f2 so you get that nice 
blurred out background, just a little bit more separation in your uh, in your vlogs. Now, the only thing is because it is APS-C, you have to take into account the crop factor. So even though you're shooting an F2, it's not necessarily appearing as an F2 depth of field, but it still is a nice depth of field nonetheless. If you were to shoot like say the 20 mil here, F1.8 on this A7 III is a vlog at F1.8, it's a little bit shallow. I'll give you an example here. I'm a bit past, you know, that's not how long you would be for um, a vlog. You'd probably be about here. It's a little shallow. It's a little shallow, it's a little bit distracting. You know, the eyes are in focus. If it misses it, it gets the eyelashes, it gets the eyebrows, you know, you're you're in a, you're in a world of distractions. So uh, you'd be better off just stopping that down to probably F2.8. The F2 works great. So we move on now to the Sennheiser MKE 200 shotgun microphone. This is an on-camera shotgun microphone and it's a 100 euro cheap beast. This is built differently than other shotgun microphones on the market. So this is a typical cheap shotgun microphone here. And this is the microphone here. It, it can take sound from the front and then from the sides. Then you'd put on a foam dampening and you can put on a dead cat and that's what you'd be used to seeing. And then for the professional side of things, they would normally put, all, they'd normally put the microphone into a, what's called a blimp and then put the dead cat over the blimp. Uh, this is actually designed like that. So this is built more like the professional shotgun microphones, the blimp style. So instead of it being built like this, where it has that kind of pen shape to it and you put it inside a blimp, it actually just has what seems to be a diaphragm inside a blimp. And that's giving you full first bit of coverage against wind. And then you have the windshield as well. So this really performs well against wind. I have the Rode Video Micro and it's terrible against wind. This one is not great against wind either. And they're all around the same. This isn't this one's really cheap. This is about 25 euro microphone. 100 euro Rode Video Micro, 100 euro, and this outperforms it by a mile. The quality, I absolutely love the quality out of it. Uh, my favorite microphone for recording is the shotgun microphone I'm using currently right now on the Zoom H6. The next one is this and I get great quality out of this. And it's just such a relief to know, one, it doesn't need batteries and it's gonna give me the quality I need and I have the settings to it. And it's just like, it's just so freeing. You know, it, the, the, this is the whole great thing about this system. It's so easy to use, it's so freeing because there is a bit of stress related to, you know, I, I have a massive light here. I have a light in the floor. I have a light above me there. I have a light there just, just lighting the background. I have a light lighting behind the computer because the lights on the computer weren't strong enough for this. Then I have a microphone there. I have a screen there. I have the camera, I have the lens. And you're like, oh my God, I just want to, I just want to make a video. Boom, I'm making video there. It's so simple. Oh, I can't see myself. Now I can see myself. Oh, it's, it's all in. It's, you know, it's, it's just, Anyway, enough gushing. Moving swiftly on to this yoke. I never thought as a professional photographer that I would own a selfie stick. I know I own a selfie stick. <laughs> and this is a pretty cool one. So it has a Bluetooth. This is the small rig. I have no idea the name. I'll put the name up on the screen. It's a small rig, Bluetooth, remote control, selfie stick, tingy me bob. This is so easy to use. It'll just It'll switch on. You've already paired it to the camera, so it works straight away. You can record video, you can shoot photo, you can use custom button one, which I've set to actually zebra lines. And then you can use the zoom doggle. Now, the only thing is that doesn't work when you're using this lens. It only works with like the kit lens and stuff. And if you hit that, you're gonna get a warning on the screen, which is annoying and it's really easy to hit here. Happens to me all the time. Again, really annoying. I have a quick release plate set on this and then I'm just using a Peak Design quick release uh, Arca Swiss just to make it easier just to switch on, you know, if I wanna have it on my uh, Peak Design grip on the camera, on the bag, when I'm vlogging and when I'm hiking or something I get there. It opens up really, really nicely. So I can get that, I can get a good, decent angle on it. I can stretch it comfortably to where the A7 III is right now, which is nice. Uh, and then it has a pair of feet for you to stand it. So it's like a, it's like a mini, it's a mini wee stand thingy. I keep saying thingy because I don't really know the name of this thing. Like, you know, it's a selfie stick. It's a, it's a mini, it's a mini camera stand. So you press in here, the silver button, and that will change the tilt. It unlocks the tilt. So you squeeze, you squeeze it in 
and then it's on it's unlocked get it into position let go and it locks it in place really easy and the whole thing about this system is i just wanted it to be easy no thinking take the camera off stick it on my sling on my on my bag carry it when i need it lift it off put it straight on there start talking away do that there and the thing is with this you're there you're there so when you're ready to talk it's not a case of like you know having to press the button then you have to edit all of that out you know if you go to press the button that there looks terrible looks terrible don't keep that in your video where with this if i was recording i'm about to record and here we go i'm talking right now to camera i'm finished do you know what i mean and it's so seamless it helps with your edits speeds up your edits you have less things to cut you can have seamless cuts in your talking and i have found out it has sped up my workflow overall when i'm when i've been doing my last previous vlogs what are the cons about this so we'll work backwards so the first con you'll see is there this top section doesn't hold position it retracts in the entire time which is really distracting when i'm trying to talk to camera and it's moving down in front of my face which means it's shortening its distance to me and the distance is very important to the con that's on the camera. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, that's the only con I found of this is just that one thing. The top section just won't lock for me. It won't ever lock. It'll just continually slide. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, the only con on the Samyang I found is that the autofocus motors, when you're in very low light, you can kind of hear them on the microphone. Just a little tick, 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 tick. And it can be a little bit distracting and trying to get it out in, in your EQ can be a bit can be a bit of a faff so i think in the last vlog i didn't even bother getting rid of it but it's only in a low light situation when it's really struggling for focus and that's more the camera then but on like during the day when it locks in and it holds it and it knows it doesn't need to go back and forth it's grand uh, if it's changing focus there seems to be a little bit of focus breeding you can kind of see it hunting back and forth where you can see the image moving in and out so there is a little bit of focus breeding but you know for the price point of that lens you can kind of accept that the problem then with the con with the microphone is that you can't move the camera it's not great with that if you move the camera so if you're talking to camera and then you wanted to turn around and face what you're talking about you need to stop talking you need to talk okay wait until i show you here isn't that amazing you need to stop talking because you will hear that noise and you're going to want to get rid of it so so if it stays there for a while it's going to look good in the in the time lapse I'll say that again it is really annoying it's the only oh, it's the only downside of that because the road video micro doesn't have that issue it really it's really good with that this is really terrible with it and i, I had seen it in the reviews as well that um any kind of movement in the camera it's it's just not very good with that the cons with the camera then there's a few of them the obvious one is it's an aps-c camera it's not going to be very good in low light so high iso performance isn't great so don't if i was to use a camera in a high iso i'd be using one of the a7 trees so yeah i keep that in mind at all times uh, the next one as well is custom buttons um i couldn't set up one for manual focus this lens doesn't have a manual focus switch so i need it as a custom button and i just have it in the functions and i keep forgetting where it is and for weeks i didn't i didn't turn off manual focus even if i had the camera set locked off the video me walking into scene to set up with a tripod you can actually see it pulsate when it changes uh focus because i, I couldn't switch off on i couldn't switch off autofocus because i couldn't remember where it was in the camera um so that's the that's the only thing as well there's, there's i would have liked one more custom button somewhere that i could have programmed in to be a manual focus autofocus switch i would have liked to be a little bit more functionality with the touch screen it is great that you can touch the focus but i would have liked a little bit more uh, touch screen on it uh, for you know when you get a notification and you just see it on the screen instead of having to go back and actually press the d-pad it would have been actually quite nice uh, the grip isn't very big it is very very small um, this is a small camera but they definitely could have afforded just a little bit bigger of a grip uh, even with the kit lens on they could have afforded a bit more because with the kit lens on it really it can fit into your pocket i would have to say the biggest con of this camera is its steady shot the stabilization in it if you're using the kit lens you can have two options you can have steady shot or active steady shot if you're using any other kind of lens that doesn't have steady shot built in you can only have 
active steady shot and the crop that's associated with it is absolutely disgusting it's a massive massive crop i don't know what the percentage is it's a horrible crop that they've put onto it uh, it takes this use of this very wide angle field of view of a 12 millimeter which is an 18 millimeter equivalent APS-C it brings it all the way down to 24. that is absolutely ridiculous thankfully the lens is good enough that you don't really notice it and um, if i'm moving uh, I'm walking around. I don't have the steadies of hands, uh, you know, when I'm when when I'm holding out for any length of time. I don't have the steadies of hands. I'll be honest with that. So um, I'll try and not move if I if I really want to show the full size of the place that I'm at. Uh, I'll try and stay as steady as I can. And then if I have to move, I'll put on active steady shot and then just I have to keep an eye on the screen to make sure that they don't chop the uh, noggin off because you can really easily just chop the noggin off. Another con to this is the how slow the sensor is. Apparently this is the same sensor that was in the A6000 except it's now shooting 4K somehow. I, I don't know how that all that works. I'm, I'm not that kind of person. But uh, it has very bad rolling shutter and for those who don't know what rolling shutter is uh, basically these CMOS sensors that they use for these cameras read uh, from top to bottom so when you move from left to right the top is recorded first and then the bottom has actually moved so you get this whole wibbly wobbly kind of jelly effect you can notice it when you see it it's very hard not to see it and when you're editing you're like what because you know when you're going frame by frame it's just it's horrible looking and then the last two cons that i found with it are in the exact same position the sd card goes in where the battery goes i absolutely hate that if you have a wide quick release plate you're not going to get your battery out. You're not going to get your SD card out. I hate that in the camera. I absolutely hate it. Um, and I would have liked that I didn't have to lock this every time when I close it. That should be just locked instead of... And you have to do that on all the cameras that I have, so... But, uh, yeah, having the SD card in where the battery, I'm not a big fan of that. And then the battery life. It's awful. The battery life is absolutely awful. Um... I can't tell you how bad it is because it's so bad. But yeah, so I've had this camera for the last couple of months. I've been using it to vlog a time lapse that I've been shooting and I've been using it for my Insta Reels, giving quick tutorials. And it's such an easy camera to use. Um, for any video work, I'm, I'm using this. I'm not using this. I'm not using my A7 trees. The greatest thing about this whole setup is its price. I couldn't remember how much I spent, so I just went on to Amazon. There are a few discounts currently because it is the day after Prime Day. Uh, so currently in Sterling, that would be £1,285 or €1,620 Euro for the entire kit. That is the ZVE-10 with the kit lens and then the Samyang 12mm. So if you didn't need the kit lens, you could just buy the kit without that there. Uh, but if you didn't want the Samyang lens, you just wanted the kit lens, you just you can save on that. So if we put that in, uh, you're down to £844. That's the camera and the microphone. That's really good. For something that's competing against the Sony A7 III, 2000 for the camera, 1100 for the uh, for the lens, and then another 100 euro for the microphone. That's 3200 euro versus 1043. That's, like, that's the biggest selling point of this. You know, if it breaks, yes, it's 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 a big deal if it breaks, but it's not as big of a deal, and that's the reason why I bought it. That's the reason why I'm doing the video. I hope you got something from this. I hope you enjoyed it. Follow me on all the social medias. You'll find me everywhere under Mark Duffy Photography. And until the next time, later, Gators.